Today we're looking at similarity and transformations. We're going to perform similarity transformations, describe similarity transformations, and prove that, similar, prove that figures are similar. Um, first, let's talk about a rotation. A rotation is where I move, I rotate things counterclockwise about the origin. So if it says a 90 degree rotation, we're going to be counterclockwise moving it um, around the origin. The origin is at the center zero, zero. Now what I would do is I would just take it and I would flip it around so that I would have negative y, x. So I, in, if I have x, y, my negative y would be negative 3, comma 2. And it's just flipped it so it's a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation. If I flipped it upside down, if I completely moved it upside down, I would have a negative x, negative y, which would give me the point negative 2, negative 3. And this would be a 180 degree rotation, whereas uh, negative 3, 2 would give me a 90 degree rotation. Now 270 degrees, it would be y negative x, which would be 3 negative 2. And this would be a, a 270 degree rotation. And if I flipped it completely 360 degrees around a, the center, it would just bring me right back to where I started. Um, a reflection would be something where it's just flipped over the x-axis, reflection over the x-axis. If I have the point 2, 3, it would be a, the point negative 2, 3. It just flips it across that x-axis, whereas if it flipped it over the y-axis, we would have the point 2, negative 3. Now sometimes we um, abbreviate this as Roxa and Roya, and we'll be using that throughout the year. Now a reflection across the, the line y equals x is where we just flip our x and our y. So if I had the point 2, 3, um, if I flipped it over the, the line y equals x, that would be the point 3, comma 2. Now similar figures are two figures that um, that where there's a sequence of rigid transformations and dilations um, that map one figure to another. So it could be that it got bigger or smaller. It could um, ro have been rotated or moved around. So let's start with our first shape, A, B, C, D. Let's go ahead and plot those points. Here we have a quadrilateral. We're first going to do a translation. We're going to take all of the x's and minus 5 from them and all of the y's and minus 3. So this is going to give us a prime, b prime, c prime, and d prime. And let's go ahead and just subtract from each of the x's 5 and from each of the y's 3. So for example, on a, 3 minus 5 would be a negative 2. And 6 minus 3 would be 3, and let's go ahead and do that for all of the points. Okay, here I have our four points. Uh, 2 minus 5 is negative 3, 5 minus 3 is 2, 4 minus 5 is negative 1, 3 minus 3 is 0, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 5 minus 3 is 2. Now next we're going to go ahead and plot our A prime, B prime, C prime, and D prime. Now, if you look at this, I have all of my points. If I move this, it could be moved right on top of the other shape, and it's going to be exactly the same. Um, but what's happened is each point has been moved. Uh, so it's gone down three and over to the left in the negative direction five. And those points line up just so. So this hasn't been changed at all. It's exactly the same shape and size. We would say that these were congruent figures. 
But next, we're going to do a dilation. And so once you make it bigger or smaller, they're no longer congruent. They are going to be similar. But all of the angles will be the same. So we have 3x, 3y. We're going to times e. We're going to change this so this first point is going to be a double prime. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply both the x and the y by 3. So I have negative 6, positive 9, b double prime is negative 9, 6. C double prime is going to be negative 3, 0. And D double prime is going to be 0, 6. Let's go ahead and plot each of those points. OK, as you look on here, you can tell that the shape just got bigger. Um, it's still the same general shape. It's just um, gotten bigger here. So this would be an example of a si similar figures. They are the same shape. They've just gotten bigger or smaller. Looking at example two, this is, we've got three points, so it's going to make a triangle. Let's go ahead and label those points. Now this time we have a dilation, so it's going to change from congruent to similar, and it's timesing by a fourth. Now timesing by the fourth is the exact same thing as dividing by four, so we're gonna go ahead and divide each of these pieces by four. If we divide 12 by four, we get three. Eight by four, we get two. Eight by four again, we get two. Zero divided by four stays zero on these next two. And 4 divided by 4 gives us 1. So let's go ahead and plot each of these points. Now, I've got this here. You can notice all the sizes are the same. But I could go ahead and can, uh, just line it up. And all of the angles line up exactly with the other angles there. Um, so it's just gotten bigger. It's gotten a lot smaller because 1 fourth is less than 1. The absolute value of 1 fourth is 1 less than one, so it's gotten smaller. Now we're gonna reflect it over the y-axis. So if it's on the y-axis, it's gonna just be the same, but this point here is just gonna reflect and become, instead of three, two, it's gonna be negative three, two. Double prime is gonna be exactly the same as t prime, and uh, two, zero is gonna become negative two, zero. So it's just kind of gonna be exactly the same but flipped over that uh, y-axis. And we have, these are all, um, these are all dilations of the first pre-image. Now number three, we're gonna look and we're gonna, ref we're gonna rotate it 90 degrees over the origin. Let's go ahead and plot our <coughs> x, y, and z. Okay, now this one we're rotating at 90 degrees about the origin. So it's kind of like we're gonna take this figure and just like rotate it uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees. We have a formula for rotating 90 degrees. We take negative y, x. So uh, we have our x and our y. And so we're, for our x prime, we're going to have negative y. So y is 6, so we're going to have negative 6, and then our x is 9. For y prime, we're going to have negative 3, 3. And for z prime, we're going to have, we're going to have negative y, which is negative 6. So as you can see, this is exactly the same triangle. It's just been rotated 90 degrees. Now next, we're going to do a dilation. This is a 2 thirds. So what you could do is you could put this in your calculator. I'm going to do this mentally. Um, so if I have my x double prime, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this negative 6 and I'm going to divide it by 3. So if I took negative 6 and divided by 3, I would have a negative 2. And then I'm going to times that number by 2 for the numerator when I'm multiplying. So uh, negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2, and negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. I'm going to do the same thing with 9. 9, I'm going to divide it by 3 first. 9 divided by 3 is 3, and then I'm going to times it by 2, which is 6. For y double prime, we're going to do a negative 3. Negative 3 divided by 3 is a negative 1. And a negative 1 times 2 is a negative 2. 
Uh, a 3 is going to be the same thing as timesing by negative 3, except it's just the positive version of it. We're going to do z double prime. Now, we've already done a negative 6. A negative 6 results in a negative 4. And a, a 3 results in a 2. So let's go ahead and plot these three points. And so as you notice, it's gotten two-thirds. Each side has gotten two-thirds the size of the original. Next, I'm going to be describing the similarity transformation that maps the pre-image to the image. Now, I'm looking at the original here, and first thing that st stands out to me is it's that it is bigger than this, small, this one here. And if I look at this size, it's a length 2, this is a length of 1. This length here is 6 units, this length here is 3 units. So each side is exactly half the size of the pre-image. So I'm going to take my x, my m, n, and l, and for each x, y, I'm going to uh, times them all by one half. So I'm going to take one half of the x coordinate and then times it by one half of the for each of the y coordinates. So I've written down each of the points, 0, 6 for n, m is 0, 4, l is 6, 6, and let's go ahead and times each of those by one half so I can get n prime, m prime, and l prime. Half of 0 is 0, half of 6 is 3, and then go on for the other points. Okay, let's go ahead and plot those. The first one is n prime is 0, 3. We have m prime, which is 0, 2. Notice it's not exactly the the same place, but it is exactly the same shape. So I could take this whole shape and just move it over and it would line up exactly. But what am I, what do I need to do to it? I need to go down one and then I'm going to go to the right one, two, three, four, and then it will line up exactly onto the original. So down one. So what I'm going to do is for my next step, I'm going to take all of those xy's and I'm going to take all of the x's and I want to add, I want them to move, I want them to move 4 to the right. So I'm going to add 4 to each of the x's. And for each of the y's, I want to go down one. So I'm going to take each of the y coordinates and minus one from them, and that will give us our end result here. So let's just double check by adding four to each of the x's and subtracting one from each of the y's. Okay, so this gives us n would be four, two, which we have, which we have here for n prime. M prime would be 4, 1, and L prime would be 7, 2. So all of those points add up to what our end result is. So this would be the transformation that we would do to the original NLM figure. Okay, now we're going to start with ABC. Now notice again, I am seeing that it is bigger. So this has a length of two, this has a length of four. So if I'm going from a small to a big, I want it to be a number bigger than one. I'm gonna times all of them by two. Let's go ahead and do that and see what it does to our figure. Okay, so our A is at point negative three, three. B is at point negative three, one. C is at negative one, one. Let's go ahead and just, um, times each of those by two. So we have negative six, six. B double prime would be negative six, two. C double prime would be negative two, two. Now we wanna go, um, let's go ahead and plot those. Now if you look at this figure here and this figure here, they are mirror images of each other. It just needs to be reflected over the y-axis. Now if you're reflecting over the y-axis, all you have to do is negate your, your x symbol, your x. So we would be getting um, c prime would be 2, 2, which gives us our end c prime point. So we need to just kind of map out what we did. The first thing we did is we multiplied the x by 2 
and the y by 2. So we're going to take for all of our xy points, we're going to take our x and times it by 2. And for our y, we're going to also times it by 2. For, um, and then from line 2 to line 3, all we did is for every x, y, we took and we made our x negative and we kept our y the same. And that would take us from this original triangle to this end triangle here. Now our last, this is a little proof. We're not going to go into it really hard, like real deeply. I just want you to know that for any triangle, you could move it so that m, we're going to move it. So m prime is on top of t, or just m is on top of t, sorry. And then what we're going to do is we're going to times all of the dimensions. We're going to dilate um, the sides by a scale factor of 2 so that y becomes 2y and x becomes 2x. So we can take a rectangle as long as the sides are proportional. Um, we can move it and they would be similar figures.